name is Dion Estes, and I play music and produce and write and sing and smile a lot and have lots of fun. I play bass, piano, and drums, but mostly bass and keyboards. The Wham Experience came about by when I was in Dublin, I got a phone call from George's, um, George Michael's publisher, which is a guy called Dick Leahy, who used to run Bell Records in the, uh, in the old days of England, before my time, in the 60s, I would imagine. And he told me that he had a young man that was writing songs and that he wanted me to get together with and, you know, do a couple of things with, and so I flew over to meet him, and there we had a nice meeting, and um, we just had one meeting, and ever since that, we were, you know, everything started. Wham! was also one of the first groups ever to play China. That was very interesting, teaching people to, um, they had never heard the music come from a speaker before, so it was very interesting to uh, see their faces when they were looking at where the sound was coming from, and of course, they had never seen a concert before, so we... They asked us to teach them what the Westerners do um, when we have a concert. So we told them, you know, we scream and we go wild and we go crazy. <laughs> and, you know, we yell and we get into it because that's what we do. Um, Did you say they'd never seen a speaker? They had never seen music come through a speaker. They had never been there. They had never had concerts like that before. Okay. Big amplifiers and speakers and light shows and people screaming and loud guitars banging. You know, which, you know, that was a theory. I mean, that that's what we thought. But as we played the concert, you could hear a pin drop. It was as quiet as we're talking here now. It's the quietest I've ever played Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go. Actually, it was very quiet. And uh, it was very dramatic. I mean, they danced, They got up and danced a little bit. But then the, the police arrested a lot of people for dancing. So it was Whoa. quite a shock. It was very communist back then. It wasn't, this is the first... This is the early, early 80s, just turning the 80s, and it was very, very strict. Our money was different. Um, you know, everybody's in China now, and China, everybody's going to China. Everybody's doing these things with, with China now. The opening dinner was really like Indiana Jones. You had fire dancers. You had monkey brains. You had, um, and, you know, you're representing your Western your Western country. So, you know, some of these things, you know, you just have to do, you know, because you're like the first. So, you know, on the, you know table with the little eels or snakes that move that you're supposed to swallow and all these little things. I, I, I thought it was quite interesting. When I saw Indiana Jones, I went, wow, it was just like that. You know, that's the way it was. <laughs> I'm still in contact with George and uh, the, the management. And, um, you know, we, I just did a, um, just a, did a biography, uh, the biography channel. It's the 25 years of George, George Michael. So uh, I just did that about three, four months ago. And that was... Uh, quite a lot of fun. I know too that George Michaels did the Don't Let the Sun Go Down. Yeah, I did that too. Did you, you did that? Oh yeah, we did that at Chicago Stadium live. That's fantastic. What yeah. was that like? It was man? great. It was awesome. It's great. Well, Elton has always been one of my one of, one of my favorite people. Elton is an amazing, amazing person and an amazing songwriter and, and musician. And um, we all became very close at that time. We did um, Elton's, we did Elton's album, Nikita. I did that, and, wow. and that's what me and George did, um, wrap her up, and then I think Nick Kershaw was on that album. There's been talk about a reunion. I, mean, I don't know if that those are rumors or, you know, I haven't heard uh, anybody say to me directly, but I've heard a lot of talk about it. Are you looking forward to that? If there was going to be a Wham reunion, that would be great, of course. You know, it would be fun. I had my album out on um, through Polygram, and that was... Um, at the same time the Faith album was out. And so we, um, I was the opening act for George Michael. Wow. And then I came out again and for another two or three hours and played bass and song with him. So yeah. tell us about your, your album, your first solo album. First solo album was called Spell. Um, did pretty well for me. Um, I had a couple of people on the album with me, a couple of produce, different producers, um, Jelly Bean Benitez at that time, you know, he was doing Madonna, that was back in those days. Uh, he came out and, and we did a couple of songs, Simon Climey, who, who um, wrote a lot of songs for a lot of other big artists. I think a lot about the Bahamas. I think, I think that, um, well, I think that one of the reasons why I came here is because I wanted to, um, I wanted to sort of work with some of the acts here and work with some of the talent because there seems to be a lot of talent here. 
you know, and I'm at that phase right now where I'm going into my album where I want to work, I want to work, I want to produce, and I want I want to find talent. So I'm very interested in uh, in some of the, the sounds that I'm hearing here, and I've only been here, you know, not not too long, but I'm sure as I the more I come, the more that I will, you know, get into finding um some good artists. Are you looking to incorporate some of the Bahamian flavor into your music? I'm thinking about that. Yeah, I'm thinking about that, and vice versa. I, I, I think there's a place for it, and I think it just needs to come out more. I think that, you know, uh, some of what I hear is light, and then I haven't heard anything really, really heavy yet so far as, I mean, not not so far as bass and bottom, because, you know, being a bass player, yeah. it's very easy for me to figure, to, to, to get into the groove because I play bass. So that's it. I mean, it's it, it's it's a lot of bass movement in, in, these, in these rhythms, so, um, which is another reason why I really like it. Me coming here is... is it's exciting and new to me. So every time I'm hearing things, and I'm always hearing music. So I'm, yeah. I'm hearing stuff. I'm looking. I'm, I'm listening. I'm learning. And you know, I, I'm quite excited myself to see what's gonna come out. You know, right. because some things just come out. You know, you don't have to really work on it. You, but when you sit down there, you go, now where did that come from? And you know, so oh yeah, that came from the Bahamas because you were over there. You got influenced by that stuff, but you didn't know it. But there it is. You know, and the bass is the bass is the first to come out. To come out with it. Though. That's what I like about it. You see. I've been. I'm started working on my new album, and um, you know, every day is a every day is a working experience. You know, so I, I'm taking on my trips from the Bahamas and all the things that I've been and all the places and and and, and just the experience that I've had in my life, and I'm putting all that into the into this second album, which will probably end up being a double album. It'll probably end up being a lot of a lot of music with a lot of friends. You know, I plan on having Elton John on some with me. I plan on having George. I plan on having this is this is the um, this is the big comeback okay. album, you know, okay. with all my friends and, uh, you know, just people I love. What are your observations on the changes that have happened in the music industry? Well, they, they, they've definitely been through some changes, oh, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, and rap as, as um, you know, I guess now people are, some people are coming down on rap. Rap has, you know... A lot of people thought it would come and go, and it's, it stayed for quite a while. And um, it's evolved. It's evolved to a whole different, whole different level. And I think people, you know, for as far as I'm concerned, as long as those messages are, are positive, I just think the messages should be very positive for the kids. You know, it's, it's, there's so many troublesome things in the world today, and I think music is a great release for people. The people, everybody loves music, and the kids love music, so, you know, when we leave here, we want to pass something on to the kids. We want to make sure that, you know, we're leading them in the right direction, so I would always say, I, I love, it's only two types of music, good and bad. I love good music. I don't care what it is. If it's rap, if it's, it doesn't make a difference to me, as long as that message is, is positive, and we're, we 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 can find some happiness into it. So you're, you're sort of uplifting uh, you're uplifting our people at the same time. And not just our people, everybody. Because music is for everybody. So, you know, you can't... I have never, ever been able... I find it very hard to be prejudiced. Or other people can be prejudiced in music. It's um, It belongs to all of us. I haven't met a lot of writers here, but I'm looking forward to it. I just say writing, as you know, uh, you know, from writing before. and Because you, you had one of the, the biggest bands here. Uh if not the biggest band for me, <laughs> um, it's really about good songs. It's about good songs and melodies. And if you have that, you know, you 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 um you write great songs, great songs that can be remembered. You know, everybody has a different opinion what a great song is. A story for me, I I like I like for the words to be interesting. I like for the words to be real, and it's and um you know, and it doesn't um you know that's why. I mean, I guess it doesn't make a difference how many love songs you make. Because love, obviously, must be, must be something to love if everybody keeps making love songs and they keep selling. That's the only way I had to look at it as a kid. I kept saying, another love song. You know, it's nice to write about the world. It's nice to write. You can write about anything. But it's always good to, to make sure that, um, you know, the music goes somewhere. It's like a, it's like a good story. That's, the, that's what I like about country music. Country music tells a story. You might not like it. You might not like it, but if you sit there and listen to it, you've got the whole story of how old Jim got together with Louise and they wound up with That's ten right. kids, and, and you got the story. <laughs> yeah. And they tell it all in three and a half minutes. You know, That's what's so great about it. They, yeah. tell, they tell that story, and they get in and they get out. They're not babbling or repeating their stuff. They tell the story. You can visualize it. You can see it, and you know, you move on.
So Dion, what type of bass is this you're jamming around right now? This is this is a this is a status bass. Um, it's a graphite. It's not wood. So the neck is graphite, so it um it stays in tune all the time. The sustain is a lot longer. Now this is the only bass that I've um really. I'm, normally my my home bases are, are Fenders, Fender Jazzers, because I came from that that old school thing from Motown. And James Jameson was my bass teacher, so uh, you know I had um. Now this bass has some special features like uh, some LEDs. Yes, yeah, it's you got some light show it's, for it's, us? it's got some LEDs on it. There's one side. That's both. <laughs> <laughs> Won't help you play any better, but it looks pretty. <laughs> <laughs> you can't play your bad shape. <laughs> so tell us about some of the guys that you performed with, that you played with, um, especially some of the avant-garde and pop. And well, in Detroit, I did a lot of, in Detroit in the early days, excuse me, in Detroit in the early days, I did a lot of playing with a lot of different people. I think after Return to Forever, which everybody remembers in the music, yes. you know, Stanley Clark, Return yeah. to Forever, uh, I think after those days, those were the great days of Mahavishnu Orchestra, um, um, you know, um, I've, I've my, not heard, uh, my I've good heard friend Ralph Armstrong lived around the corner for me, the bass player who played for them. And oh. of course, Narada, uh, Michael Walden, great producer and drummer played with Mahavishnu. Yes. And we just did um, a couple of tracks together for Aretha Franklin. And, um, you just did that? Yeah. Now about a, seven or eight months ago or something like that. And Is it out yet? I don't know. I think it's called Girls from Detroit. Um, I think it might be coming out soon. And he's producing all that stuff. He's great. That's and, uh, the ride of Michael Walker. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, he's still moving. Yeah, I'm still doing it, man. Beautiful guy. Yeah. Beautiful being. And uh, we've known each other for many, many, many years. Yes. Since we were, we started off as kids. We all started off. He went to Mahavishnu. I went somewhere. And we all, you know. So where is John McLaughlin now? Is he still around? I, yeah, I, I would imagine he is still around. I don't know yeah. where. Yeah. And those were great albums in those oh, days, and, and we were always into that. And then we got into the more, I had a group called Brainstorm. I don't know if you remember Brainstorm. Uh, I was in a group called Brainstorm, and, mm -hmm. and, and they were a great group. And uh, they had a song, Loving Is In My Game, and uh, This Must Be Heaven, uh -huh. and a song called Popcorn, and a um, lot, lot, of, lot of good records were done, done back in Detroit, and a lot of good stuff. <laughs> Okay, that's a few more riffs. <laughs> <All right. laughs>